All right, we are now recording. Tim, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us about your topic tonight? Uh, sure. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Tim O'Neill. I'm the Twin Cities Regional Labor Market Analyst uh, with the Department of Employment and Economic Development. So I work uh, pretty closely with Stephen quite a bit, uh, you know, through the Career Force locations. So I definitely have to give a shout out to the Career Force locations. Um, you know, they're constantly helping out job seekers. And Stephen can give, you know, more information on that. I'm sure you hear from him uh, all the time. But uh, it's nice to have that arm with Indeed that are reaching out to and helping out job seekers one on one. Uh, especially during times like now with COVID-19 and the economic recession. But, uh, you know, for myself within, uh, within DEED, I'm a part of the labor market information office. And we have lots and lots of labor market information, lots of data. Uh, we have over, actually got a list right here. We have over 20 labor market information tools uh, and resources. So we've got everything from, you know, looking up estimated employment and wages for specific occupations uh, to projections, job vacancies, you know, so what jobs are in demand currently. Uh, and then we have graduate employment outcomes, educational outcomes, uh, you know, you name it, we have it when it comes to labor market information, just what's happening in Minnesota, what's happening in its regions and its counties and its cities. Uh, so again, with that, you can get a look at industry trends, you can look at occupational trends. Um, so we have, we have quite a bit of information and, you know, you can reach out to the labor market analysts if you ever want uh, just like a quick statistic or a quick stat. So that's kind of my job. I describe my job as a, as a regional labor market analyst uh, as doing homework for others free of charge. So I think the biggest takeaway for my presentation here at the beginning of, the, of your meeting is uh, I exist, my job ex exists and you can reach out to uh, myself in the metro area. So I cover uh, Anoka, Carver, Dakota, Hennepin, Ramsey, Scott and Washington counties. Uh, and we also have regional labor market analysts in greater Minnesota. So uh, we've got Mark Schultz down in Southeast Minnesota, Eric White in Northwest Minnesota, Carson Gorecki in Northeast Minnesota based out of Duluth and uh, Luke Greiner based out of St. Cloud for Central and Southwest Minnesota. And then finally, you can also reach out to our supervisor, Cameron Macht. Uh, he was a regional analyst himself for over a decade, knows this stuff, you know, like the back of his hand. And uh, you can also you know, just reach out to anyone else in the labor market information office to our director, um, any of the other folks that are putting this information together, kudos to them because they're, you know, working from home now, collecting this information through surveys, administrative data, censuses, and uh, they really know the, the nuts and bolts of all of this labor market information. So I'll, I'm going to give a little spiel on just the website, navigating the DEED website, the Labor Market Information Office, the tools that we have, and especially how to reach out to me. So if you zone out or if you forget anything, I suppose this is a recording, but uh, definitely knowing how to reach out to myself or others within the office going forward or whatever you're looking into. So I, I did mention too, so you can reach out to me for those quick stats. If you want a customized report, I can help out with that. If you want me to do like a look at a certain industry sector, a certain occupation or an occupational group, I can look into that. Uh, or if you want a presentation going forward, I can help you out with that too. So I um, can help out with any and all of the above. So definitely reach out if you have any questions. I set my timer. I see I've already gone through like five, six minutes just doing introductions. Um, so uh, Alan, what did, what did you want me to do here? Just go forward through uh, the, the DEED website? Yeah, that, um, go ahead and do your presentation. I wouldn't worry too much about the timing. Um, it, you'll find this is a pretty interactive group and so they'll be asking questions. So um, so yeah, it, it's uh, it's your time to shine and I'm okay. glad you're here. Yeah, sounds great. Um, yeah, questions anytime. Uh, feel free to interrupt or uh, you know go on the chat thing I can see once in a while. But I'm gonna share my screen just for a little bit. Uh, I don't wanna lecture too much or do this too much on a, on a snowy evening with labor market information. Um, but I'll share my screen here, see if this works. Okay, share screen one. Uh, so can you guys see this screen here? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, George uh, and Jeremy, you're kind of my, the two guys that I can see off the right. So if I see you dozing off or if you have a question or whatever, whatever, <laughs> I'll, I'll look to you guys. Um, but this is, uh, I've got two browsers here. This is the main uh, DEED website. Not sure if you all are familiar or not familiar with the DEED website. If you are, keep checking it out. We're constantly doing updates. 
uh, what you can see in the latest news, you can see in the middle here. So for instance, if I go back one, uh, you can see Coursera is a pretty cool opportunity. Uh, Stephen might know more about that actually, but uh, where you can do some online learning. I know there's some deadlines coming up soon uh, for to get some of the advantages of Coursera, uh, that online learning. But yeah, you can always find out what's the latest news, what's the latest data, uh, what are the latest things that you can find out through just the main deed website here. Uh, along the top then, uh, this is where we're starting to get into the website itself. You can see a lot of resources for job seekers, for businesses, for government. Um, all the data that I play around with that our labor market information office collects, all of that stuff is within this data tab. But before I get to that, I just wanted to go, uh, do a quick shout out. I mentioned uh, the career force locations earlier, and you can find a lot of information about the career force locations, about careerforcemn.com. I believe past uh, weekly meetings have delved into careerforcemn.com, so I won't do it too much. But through the website, you can find that uh, through these links here. Pretty much all of these links will ultimately end up at careerforcemn.com. Uh, veterans employment programs, you can find a lot of information for veterans here. And then also the job search guide, I would recommend checking out. If you wanna look at updating your resume, if you wanna sharpen your, uh, or polish your interviewing skills, or looking at your CVs or just any of that kind of stuff, you can find a lot of that great information uh, there's, through this creative job search, this, this job search guide, again, through the job seeker tab here. So that's uh, for job seekers, for businesses. I don't know how many of you here are considering starting up or expanding your own business, but you can find a lot of resources there. Um, I'm, you know, the labor market information office and the, the career force locations aren't the only things with Indeed. There's also uh, resources like uh, the workforce development managers. Uh, they're constantly trying to help out businesses with connecting with employers, with uh, expanding their businesses in the state of Minnesota. So, excuse me, that's the workforce. Um, there's the business development managers and the workforce strategy consultants. So you might get those two mixed up, but just reach out to me if you have any questions. The business development managers are there to help businesses expand and relocate in Minnesota. And the workforce strategy consultants uh, are throughout the state of Minnesota to help with employers trying to find those workers. So uh, whatever it may be, if you're starting up or you know, expanding your own business or looking for work, um, you can reach out to other folks within the department too. And I've already probably overwhelmed a lot of you, but again, the main thing for my presentation here today is knowing that if you go to the data tab and then you hover over that and click on LMI Health, you don't have to remember any of the things that I've said so far. You can just reach out to the Labor Market Information Office here. You can email us. You can call us up. Uh, it says nine to three, but you can really, you can email us anytime. And then uh, if you click on Labor Market Analysts, this is actually where you can find my specific contact information and anyone else in the office too. So I mentioned Cameron, my supervisor. And then here is scrolling down are all the regional analysts throughout the state of Minnesota, including me. So the one thing I'll say uh, beyond, you know, knowing where my contact information is and contact information for the rest of the office, one of the biggest takeaways when you're at the DEED website or with any of the labor market information tools, we love blue links and tabs. So always keep an eye out for blue links and tabs. They'll lead to more information. They'll lead to new tools. Um, and in this case, you'll see my name is a blue link. So if you click right on my name, it'll open it up uh, to an email where you can shoot me a message and uh, I can help you out with whatever you're looking into. You can call me up too. So yeah, feel free to reach out anytime. With that, that's actually kind of the uh, very initial intro and navigation of the DEED website. Are there any questions so far? Yes, Tim, I have a question. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, All right. So this is Dennis Steve's calling from the uh, Minnesota Lottery. I'm a recruiter as well as a veteran. So this is my first time coming to this meeting, but so I was listening to your presentation and I'm also working from home. So I'm, I'm sitting here with my home computer too. And I, I just wanted to see if uh, uh, external people um, can just go straight to the site and it, and they can go to the yep. site, but it does look a little different. Uh, it might, um, uh, it might depend on the screen size. Maybe uh, I know you can check out the deeds working on, you know, having that reactiveness depending on the screen size. So it'll look different. You know, for instance, if you're looking on a phone or a tablet, 
versus a, a computer screen monitor. And I'll even change, you know, for instance, if I take this down a little bit, I don't know if you still see this, but yeah, you can see it starts to change depending on how big the screen is. Yeah, I was, I was, um, I was more so concerned with when you when you went to the part with your contact stuff. I was looking for that on the external, uh, going going in externally through the to the deed site, and I didn't, I didn't see right away the contact stuff there. Okay. The external site, but but I as you, I mean, I know I can see it on the internal site there, but external I couldn't see that on it. I didn't okay. See that. I'll make sure to. Um... Uh, you know, with again, with when you're on the deed website, mn.gov slash deed, our contact information is data and then LMI help. Uh, okay. I'll make sure to, you know, this is on recording, so you'll see this over and over for, you know, future needs, but I'll make sure to send Alan uh, my contact information and some other folks within the office too. You can pass that out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. And it looks like Alan just sent out the link too. So that's great. Thank you. Uh, Timothy, I, this is Brad Sean. I have a question. Um, so I understand that this has a lot of data, uh, but data without any kind of backing around what you can utilize it for is kind of pointless, right? So I, I, I guess my, my biggest question is as a job seeker, what are the, the, the first places you would guide us going in, in researching what we would look for when we're looking at new jobs? Like where would we yeah, go? Great question. And that's actually a, a really nice segue into, um, the second part of my presentation here. Uh, yeah, so I'll do that right now. Um, so right, you know, at the beginning here, I introduced myself, Deed, the Labor Market Information Office, how to reach out to us, navigate the website a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna show quick too, some of the resources that we have for job seekers. And then from there, you can kind of get an idea of all the other information that we have and what to look for. And um, when you're going into these tools, what you might expect. So I'm, I'll show uh, quickly one tool here right away. Um, and it'll kind of show you too how you can find our tools. So again, you just go to the main deed website, mn.gov slash deed, hover over data, and then you can hover over data tools. And when you do that, you see this alphabetical listing of all these tools that we have. They're, in, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory, which is nice. Some of them are not quite self-explanatory. Like for instance, occupational employment statistics, what's that all about? This brings up another way to find our tools that I think might be more beneficial if you're new to our website and new to labor market tools. And that's where when you're at the main website, rather than doing the hover down option, uh, just click right on that data tab. And when you do that, this is actually kind of the home base for the labor market information office. So you'll see all these blue links again, we love them. There's LMI help at the bottom here. Uh, there's publications that we have. Uh, including uh, economic trends and employment review. So check those out if you want to, you know, read more about what's happening in the regions and the state of Minnesota without having to delve into the tools. Otherwise, the, there's the data tools here. So if you click on this link, uh, this will give up uh, the same alphabetical list of all the labor market tools that we have, except you also get this little description of what the tools are all about. And then you can click right on the blue link to enter. So for the first tool that I'm going to show you, it's called Occupations in Demand. And if I'm scrolling down alphabetically, we see Occupations in Demand here. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. High demand jobs for each region of the state along with typical wages and training. So I'll go ahead and click on that blue link. There we go. I actually had it open there too. If we were going to do it the drop-down method way, data, data tools, and then you find Occupations in Demand right here. So this is kind of how all of our tools are set up though. Uh, and we're, we're constantly on that kind of fine line of, we wanna provide as much data as we can on occupations and industries, so on and so forth. And then having the data and the data tools be user friendly and user accessible. So definitely reach out to me or the office as well. If you have any feedback, positive or negative, uh, we're constantly trying to make our resources um, more beneficial for all Minnesotans. But with that said, uh, you can find a little description of what you're getting yourself into at the top. You'll always get this middle section on, you know, about the tool, where the data is coming from, why it's put together. And then, like I mentioned before, keep your eye out for links and tabs. Uh, in this case, there's always a methodology tab. And then in this case, there's a glossary tab too. And then the final thing I'll say about kind of navigating the tool before we actually get into it uh, we've added these two blue links to each of, our, each of our tools now. 
there's a printable tutorial and also a little video tutorial. So if you forgot how to use the tool or any of the tools going forward, you can just click on those uh, and learn about the tools on your own time. So I saw the, I set a timer for 15 minutes, it went off. So I've got a, like five minutes to show you this tool. Um, and if we have questions, we can go forward too. I'll kind of uh, go depending on how Alan uh, has the time here. But with occupations in demand, uh, or for any tool, you'll see this use the data tool button. Highlights in green when you hover over it, you can't miss it. So you just click right on that. And then you'll actually enter the data tool. So this is where labor market information can get a little bit overwhelming uh, for some users. Uh, again, it's, it's a lot of data that we're collecting uh, from businesses, from job seekers, from uh, you know just anybody and everybody across the state of Minnesota when it comes to occupations and industries and so on and so forth. So it's, it's just, it can get pretty overwhelming pretty quickly. But my suggestion is when you're using any of these tools, uh, just take the time to look through the tables. They're actually not too bad when you're starting to look at the column headers. So you can see we've got job titles, we've got 25th percentile wage, which uh, is kind of a starting wage, 75% are earning more, 25% are earning less, median wages, projections, education requirements, and then on the job training requirements. So this tool uh, is basically showing us, based off of local labor market information, uh, which includes job vacancy survey data, occupational employment statistics data, and unemployment insurance claims, which we actually leaned on more heavily for this latest update. And if I scroll down, we see that we just updated this tool in November of 2020. So it, it takes all that data, compiles it together, puts it into an algorithm, and then it spits out this list from the most in-demand job in the state or the region to the least in-demand. And I've got a chat here. Let's see, what it, let's see what it was. Okay, can you cover how to do salary research? Yes, for sure. So with salaries, I, I saw that, and I mentioned, you can see that here, it does include 25th and then median or the 50th percentile wages. So this is one, where, uh, one way where you can start to look at wages for specific occupations you know, along with that, are these jobs in demand? This is for the state of Minnesota. You can see that at the top. Let's say that I wanted to look at occupations uh, in the seven county metro. Uh, that's where I can go to the top here and hit this start new search. And then I can select from these planning regions. So I'll do the seven county metro here, hit view data. And now this list, all that local labor market information is not for the state, but it's for the seven county metro. So these wages are now for the metro area too. And we see that in the metro area, registered nurses, number one most in-demand job, uh, median wage of 85000 a year. Should have been a registered nurse, although it's a um, <laughs> very stressful time. Uh, but scrolling down, uh, you can also filter too. I'll do one more tip or trick here for you guys. Um, with education category, let's say that I had an associate's degree. So I can do that, hit get filtered results it'll knock out all those other occupations that have other educational requirements. And then I can kind of go through this list based off the five star system, five stars being uh, it's the most in demand, one star being the least in demand. And then I can kind of look at some of these jobs and get a good idea for what are those occupations that are in demand right now. Uh, with the wages, as Alan asked, uh, we've got the 25th and the median wages here. You can see, remember I mentioned blue links and tabs before. So if I actually click on the blue link for any of these jobs, let's say I'm looking at industrial engineering technologists and technicians, if I click on that blue link, this actually opens up into another data tool of ours, the occupational employment statistics. I'm not gonna go through this tool today, but definitely reach out if you want me to uh, talk to you more about this tool. This is a tool that uh, we survey hundreds of businesses throughout the state of Minnesota and they report their estimated employment and wages to our office. And so this is uh, the results of that data. So for this particular job, and you can see this SOC code here, which you can line up with like ONET or Career One Stop uh, or any Bureau of Labor Statistics tool, if that SOC code, that standard occupational classification code lines up, you know that you're looking at the exact same occupation. But yep, in this case, you can see there's an estimated 2,500 plus industrial engineering technicians in the state of Minnesota. Uh, starting wage, you know, 1807, based off that 10th percentile wage. Starting wages based off of experience and education uh, could also be closer to that 25th percentile, 2156. 
with a median wage of 2641. Um, and then you can also look at in this case, half of industrial engineering technicians in Minnesota are earning between 2156 and 3127. So looking between the 25th and the 75th percentiles gives you a really good idea of what you're probably gonna you know, typically be earning in that occupation. Uh, occupations, not so much industrial engineering technicians, you can see they're definitely largely in manufacturing, uh, but some like maybe IT jobs, they're spread throughout a bunch of different industry sectors. And those wages might change based off the industry that you're working in. Uh, and so you can kind of get a sense for how the wages might differ uh, based on what industry you're working in from this table here. Uh, finally, almost finally, you can get also comparative uh, wages here in this table. And then finally, you can get related occupations and you can click right on those links too to go to their occupational profile. And then these tasks come from ONET. So again, this is occupational employment statistics. This was a link right from that occupations and demand tool. And I'm gonna bring this down for a second. Uh, the ONET, uh, the Zoom kind of covers that up. But yeah, that's right from clicking on this blue link here for any of these occupations within the occupations in demand tool. The last thing I'll say about this tool, and then I'll, I'll be done talking for my initial part of the presentation here, and we'll go to questions. Uh, you'll see one more blue link on the right here, education requirements. So with this, let's say we're looking at industrial engineering technicians again. If I click on that blue link for associate degree, it actually brings up a list of those educational institutions, in this case, in the seven county metro, because we picked the grant. And then you can click on that blue link to go to their website, learn more about the courses, uh, the faculty, so on and so forth. Sometimes uh, there might be an error or, you know, website not accessible. We find that educational institutions are switching up their websites pretty often and we can't keep up sometimes. Well, if that happens, it's still nice to know from this list. Now you can Google search or go to their websites, in this case, you know, for Hennepin Technical College or Avivo or Dunwoody, and you can see what's going on in this case with manufacturing or industrial engineering. Uh, so I think between the wages, between the education listings, and just getting a sense of what are those occupations in demand for the regions and the states, uh, this occupations in demand is a great, great tool to start out with if you're looking into finding a new career or transition. Uh, so with that, I'll, are there any questions? This is Renee. Can you sort this table? Is there a way to click on maybe that blue question mark or the header of the column or something to sort by the, to sort the table? In yep. any yeah, great question. Um, so you can, so let's say I was doing, um, you know, let's say I did a bachelor's degree, get filtered results. You can see that it automatically uh, filters it from the current demand rank that being the most in demand to the least in demand. But let's say that you wanted to filter by like planning area projected opening. So I can just click right on that blue link uh, at the top. And in this case, it went from the most down to the least. And depending on how many times you click it, it'll just put in an ascending or descending order. So same with like median wage, uh, so on and so forth. So that can be a way of filtering this. Another way and with all of our tools, uh, you can also, you see these buttons at the top, export. Uh, with all of our tools, you can export the data to Excel, and then you can play around with filtering or making tables, charts, graphs uh, to your heart's desire within Excel with any and all of our data that we produce through our office. But yeah, great question. Uh, we had a question. Uh, is the OES a good tool for salary research as a job seeker? Uh, where can I type in my occupation and find the salary? Yes. So, uh, with the occupations in demand tool, as well as occupational employment statistics, as well as we have another tool that I think would be really beneficial uh, for all of you and any and all vets and any and all job seekers called the Career and Education Explorer tool. Uh, in all of these tools, you can do a keyword search for a specific occupation too. So let's say we did, uh, you know, welder. I did that, it get filtered results. Uh, the welder pops up. So you don't have to scan through the whole list trying to find this one occupation, you can just go right to it. So in this case, welders, five stars, it's in demand, median wage of about $47,000 in Minnesota. And then we, we do project this occupation to grow uh, through the next 10 years. And then you can check out some of those educational institutions hiring uh, for this occupation. 
Uh, Alan, uh, if I've got like two more minutes, maybe, could I show just quick uh, something on our Career and Education Explorer tool? Absolutely, please do. Okay. Wow us. <laughs> so I don't want to overwhelm you know, everybody too much. Uh, I actually do, before COVID-19 came along, I would do these three hour training sessions and uh -huh. it's just, they were very, it was very overwhelming sometimes, even for myself, I, was, I would get like sick of hearing my own voice. And I would go through almost all of the labor market tools in one sit down session. And that was probably too much. So COVID-19 has definitely, I think, helped lean up um, the labor market office and how we do some of our outreach. Um, but yeah, you can lose yourself in, in the time with some of these tools. I wanted to show quick, and you saw, I, I just clicked right on the left here on the screen. If you're in any of our tools, uh, navigating the website can be a little bit easier too, because we have an alphabetical order all the tools on the left hand side as well. So you saw I clicked on Career and Education Explorer. If you're on the main deed website, again, data, data tools, and I can find it right here, Career and Education Explorer. Uh, one thing I wanted to show quick, with this tool, I'll enter it. You can explore by education or careers. Got an email. Uh, I'm gonna explore by careers. And as I mentioned before, you can do a keyword search. So let's say I did welder here. I'll hit enter. It looks like nothing happened, but it did. Uh, so just click on that drop down list, select the occupation you're looking for. That's done with step one. Step two, pick your region. So I'll do a local region and I'll do the seven county metro. I'm going through this pretty fast, but you know it's on a recording and you can reach out to me whenever too. But after you make all these changes, hit the go button and then we'll find uh, this profile in this case for welders. Now there are other places that you can find a lot of labor market information that um, this is on a recording, so I shouldn't say it, but are probably more aesthetically pleasing, like Career One Stop or the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook or ONET. They all have great labor market information um, supplied through state agencies and through the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, but one of the things that I think is really beneficial about uh, a tool like the Career and Education Explorer tool that you see here is, yeah, I can see all this labor market information. I can go through these lists and find out more. But one of the cool things is I can finally start applying for jobs with this tool as well. So I clicked on apply for jobs. And then you can see the date posting. I'll actually, uh, new to old. You can actually start applying for these jobs, clicking right on these links. Sometimes they'll go to minnesotaworks.net. Sometimes they'll go to usajobs.gov or the Minnesota State Jobs website. Sometimes they'll go to the actual employer's you know, main website. And then you can start applying for uh, these occupations that are out there. So that's kind of what I wanted to get through today, going through occupations in demand, uh, showing quick the Career and Education Explorer tool where you can actually start applying for work uh, or jobs or transitioning, and then just quickly showing how to find and navigate the main deed website at min.gov slash deed. So with that, I think uh, my main presentation is over and we'll go to questions. I'm going to stop sharing.